During the orbit of a Soviet Union space station, an electrical failure occurred, and its contact with the ground station was lost. Fortunately, at the time of this incident in the space station named Salyut 7, there was no crew present. But with the power failure, it went out of control, and also deviated from its orbit. This issue was the most serious problem to arise in the space history of the Soviet Union. Flying at a speed of 27,000 kilometers per second, an uncontrolled space station was no less dangerous than a time bomb. All options to regain control over it had failed, but then something happened that made the Soviet Union hold its head high with pride. During the Cold War between America and the Soviet Union, both countries were busy demonstrating their power. This display of power, which cost billions of dollars, also led to the invention of things by both countries that we are still benefiting from today. For example, the internet, jet aircraft, global positioning satellites, or GPS. During this time, steps were also taken to belittle each other in the eyes of the world, things that humans could not even think of before. And when this topic comes up, the space race is the first thing that comes to mind. Both countries had become so obsessed with each other that their goal was to launch as many space missions as possible. During the space race in the 1970s, both countries launched several space stations whose purpose was to research various things in space. The Soviets named their space station Salyut, while the USA named their space station program Skylab. These space stations were small and were launched at the same time. After conducting research in space for a limited time, they were brought back to Earth. Now the competition was about who could keep their astronauts in the space station for the longest time. The rivalry between them was so intense that when the USA named their space crew astronauts, the Soviets didn't want to use the same term. Instead, they named their space crew cosmonauts. In the 1980s, to teach a lesson to the USA, the Soviet Union decided to move beyond small space stations and build a large, full-fledged MIR space station. The development of this had already faced significant delays, and at that time, their Salyut 6 space station had completed its time in space. Therefore, while they were launching the MIR space station, the Soviets launched the Salyut 7 space station. This was because they wanted to maintain their presence in space during this time. The special thing about Salyut 7 was that it had docking ports at the front and back. With the help of these docking ports, another spacecraft could come and attach to it during orbit, which made crew rotation and supply delivery possible at the same time. In April 1982, Salyut 7 was launched using a proton rocket, and on the 13th of May, a crew was sent on a mission in which they stayed for 211 days, setting a new world record. The task was to launch a 28 kilograms radio satellite through the trash airlock of the space station. This was the first communications satellite to be launched from any manned space vehicle. Salyut 7's first year passed successfully, but then one by one, obstacles began to arise. On September 9th, 1983, cosmonauts noticed zero pressure in a fuel tank. This was in no way normal because zero pressure means that a tank has completely emptied. After investigation, a spot of fuel leakage was found outside the space station. It should be mentioned here that due to the lack of atmospheric pressure in space, even a needle-sized hole in the space station will cause the vacuum of space to suck everything out. And this is what happened with Salyut 7's fuel tank. To prevent this hole from causing further damage, it was very important to seal it in time. Unfortunately, the cosmonauts lacked some tools. The ground station launched another spacecraft to Salyut 7 just for the delivery of tools. It was supposed to dock with Salyut 7. It had extra crew and the necessary tools. This repair is considered one of the most complex repair works of that era, in which cosmonauts had to go outside the space station to do welding. The repair of Salyut 7 was indeed impressive, but the upcoming difficulties were about to turn their breaths of relief into trouble. In 1984, the cosmonauts of Salyut 7 left the space station on autopilot mode and returned to Earth via the Soyuz spacecraft. A few months after the cosmonauts return, on February 11, 1985, suddenly contact with Salyut 7 was lost by the ground station team. Upon checking the fault logs, it was found that some kind of electrical surge had occurred inside Salyut 7, which was in orbit. The ground team activated the secondary communication system to restore contact. Now contact with Salyut 7 was restored, but immediately after that, another electrical surge occurred, and all kinds of contact with the space station were lost. Not only that, but it also deviated from its orbit, which was a dangerous moment for the Soviets. The 16-meter-long space station without any crew had become completely silent and out of control. 
When this news reached the USA, it was an excellent opportunity for them. The USA wanted to use their cargo bay shuttle to capture Salyut 7, bring it back to Earth, and then become a hero in the eyes of the world. In the eyes of the world, the Soviet Union seemed quite helpless in this matter. Therefore, they decided to send a crew of two cosmonauts to repair it. This task would have been quite easy if the space station was operational, because in that case, the docking mechanism installed in it would automatically connect with another spacecraft. The intention of the Soviet Union meant that they would first manually track the space station orbiting at a speed of 27,000 kilometers hour, and then align the spacecraft with it for a manual docking. The intentions of the Soviet Union meant that they would first manually track the space station orbiting at a speed of 27,000 kilometers hour, and then align the spacecraft with it for a manual docking. And in this entire process, even a small mistake could cost the lives of the crew sent. But there was no other option. On June 6, 1985, the Soyuz spacecraft was launched for the rescue of Salyut 7. The cosmonauts also took night vision goggles with them, as manual docking might have to be done when it's completely dark. After orbiting for two days, the cosmonauts finally approached Salyut 7. The first thing they noticed were the misaligned solar panels, which meant that the electrical system had completely failed. This is because the solar panels on spacecrafts are connected with electrical actuators, which keep the position of the solar panels towards the sun at all times. Using the laser rangefinder, the crew first aligned themselves with Salyut 7 and then matched its rotation with their spacecraft's rotation, gradually approaching the space station. Finally, they successfully manually docked the Soyuz with Salyut 7. Now was the moment everyone had been waiting for, because no one knew why Salyut 7 had shut down and what dangers might be hidden inside it. After docking, when they opened the hatch of Salyut 7, they immediately felt a blast of extremely cold air. Because Salyut 7 had been without power for a long time, its internal heating system was also off. Inside was pitch dark, and everything was frozen. The temperature was around minus 150 degrees Celsius, a condition for which Salyut 7's interior was not designed. Both cosmonauts wore warm clothes and opened the three hatches to enter inside Salyut 7. They had an air quality tester with them, which showed a high quantity of carbon monoxide, indicating that there had been a fire. Both cosmonauts were having difficulty breathing, as Salyut 7's circulation system was also not working. The carbon dioxide in their breath was taking the internal environment to a dangerous level. Therefore, they decided that only one cosmonaut would stay in Salyut 7 at a time, while the other remained in Soyuz. There was also a significant issue with supplies for both crew members. They only had food and water for eight days. Even if they used it sparingly, they could stretch it to only about 12 days. But diagnosing and repairing the problem in Salyut 7 could take more than 12 days. However, when they began troubleshooting the electrical system, they found that the entire space station had shut down due to the malfunction of just one sensor. This sensor is fitted in the batteries to protect them from overcharging. When this sensor malfunctioned, it prevented the batteries from charging. Eventually, the batteries were completely drained, and the whole system shut down. After replacing the sensor and changing the direction of the solar panels, amazingly, Salyut 7 came back to life and remained a part of the mission for another year. During that time, the Soviet Union had also launched its largest space station, MIR, after which there was no real need for Salyut 7. However, it was decided to keep it in orbit regardless. The crew of MIR traveled to Salyut 7 via spacecraft, and achieved a new world record by transferring from station to station. The Soviets wanted to keep Salyut 7 in space longer, so they sent it to a higher orbit of 475 kilometers. But after the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, due to funding issues and other problems, attention was diverted from Salyut 7. It gradually lowered its orbit and eventually made an uncontrolled re-entry into Earth's atmosphere, disintegrating over South America. Thus, the Soviet Union's last Salyut space station came to an end, 